Arbitrum is a layer two scaling solution for Ethereum, which promises lower fees and higher transaction throughput, something the Ethereum network is in desperate need of. The mainnet was opened up to developers in late May with the consumer launch imminent. In this video, we'll be looking at how optimistic rollups like Arbitrum work, then we're gonna be deploying some smart contract code to the Arbitrum network before moving some funds around on layer two using Uniswap. So let's take a look at how optimistic rollups work. On the Ethereum mainnet, a user will send a transaction to the network, all the computers on the network will run the processing on that transaction, they'll all come to the same conclusion. Consensus will be formed well, on Ethereum, this is currently done with a proof of work algorithm, and the state will be updated, the block will be finalized, and we'll move on to the next block in the blockchain. In an optimistic rollup, it happens slightly differently. A user will send a transaction to a subchain. All these transactions will be aggregated together and then sent to layer one. So the transactions essentially come into layer two, that gets aggregated and optimized and then posted to a transaction inbox, which is just a smart contract on layer one. Validator nodes can then take them transactions, run the computation, taking a lot of the hard work away from layer one, and then post the changes. The key thing about an optimistic rollup is that we assume those changes are correct unless someone disputes that they're not. So a third party validator come in and say, what you did there isn't right, the state isn't correct, you made a mistake, or there's some kind of malicious intent here, they'll post a challenge and it'll go kind of a dispute resolution procedure. Now different optimistic rollups such as Arbitrum and Optimism handle the dispute resolution differently, but ultimately when you post changes, you have to post a bonded stake and that'll go to whoever's correct. So if the disputer comes in and says you're incorrect and it turns out that the, the block wasn't valid, then they'll get the bonded stake. In practice for end users, this all goes on behind the scenes. So all you see is a different network in MetaMask which you can connect to and get lower transaction fees. So for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna be using the RinkB test network. So let's go ahead and get some Ethereum tokens to start with. So RinkB faucet. What we have to do here is post our address into a social media message. So we're gonna post this on Twitter. So we're gonna copy our account here. We're gonna to go to Twitter and post that message. Post our account. Then we're gonna get the URL of that tweet and post it in here. So now we've got some play money on the Rinkby testnet. What I wanna do now is go to the bridge at Arbitrum, which is simply bridge.arbitrum.io, I believe. And we're gonna use this to transfer funds from layer one to layer two. You can see here we can either transfer Ethereum or ERC20 tokens. I'm gonna to transfer an Ethereum. So I'm gonna transfer five Ethereum onto the Arbitrum network. Let's deposit that. We'll confirm a transaction in MetaMask. The layer one transaction has gone through there and the layer two transaction is going through now. We also use the bridge to transfer funds out of the layer two back onto layer one. And it's worth noting that that can take some time up to about seven days. I think currently on the test net, it's only a single day, but what you're essentially waiting for is that challenge period we spoke about for the dispute resolution. We've got to give the nodes enough time to analyze the blocks, launch the disputes and solve them disputes before we can actually get our tokens off safely. I think in time there's going to be workarounds and third parties that come in that make this process a little bit smoother. I know MakerDAO has already got a kind of a fast bridge, which is uh, almost instant, I believe. We're also going to want to add the Arbitrum network to MetaMask, which I haven't done yet. So we're going to allow Rink RB, which is the Rink B Arbitrum network testnet 421. This is all fine. Let's switch that net to that network and see if the funds have gone through yet. Still waiting for them funds to go through. But you can see now we're basically switching between layer two and layer one. We can do this in a similar way to how the, we switch between Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum, for example. Okay, that transaction's gone through now. And you can see we've got five Ethereum in our layer two account. Now let's go ahead and try deploying a smart contract to the Arbitrum network. So the first thing we do is create a directory, move into that directory and initialize a Truffle application. 
Okay, so we've got the smart contract code and the migration files all fine. So we're just gonna deploy this standard contract. And the one thing we wanna look at is the Truffle configuration file. because so we don't wanna be deploying this to Ethereum, we wanna be deploying it to Arbitrum. So code Truffle config. And we need to make some changes here. The first thing we need to do is install a couple of NPM modules. This is specific to the Arbitrum bridge. So NPM install. Let's do that, let's go install the HD wallet provider as well. And this will just manage our account. We also need an account on Arbitrum to pay for the gas fees or the ARB gas. And we need a mnemonic seed phrase or a way to access that account. So I'm just gonna use a string here to save my seed phrase, but you can do it more securely than that, obviously, if you're using real funds. Scrolling down, we also need to add a network configuration. So we've got Arbitrum, we've got the RAP provider and the HD wallet provider, which are the two modules we just installed. And we've got the mnemonic seed phrase, which accesses our account, and the RinkB Arbitrum RPC URL. We've got the network ID and a gas cost. That all looks fine. The last thing I'm gonna do is just set my Solidity compiler to the latest version. Now we can jump into the console and try and see if this works. So let's clear this and then we're going to use truffle console network arbitrum. Right, let's try migrating these files then. And there we go, that's been deployed. We've got the contract address here. And we've successfully deployed a smart contract to the Arbitrum network. There's a few other bits you need to know about developing Solidity smart contracts on the Arbitrum. So one thing to be aware of is that system variables can differ on layer two to layer one. For example, the block dot number actually returns an estimate of the layer one block provided by the sequencer. And something like TX dot gas price will actually return the ARB gas price as opposed to the layer one gas price, which we're used to. If you want to get Arbitrum specific variables, we can use the ARB sys pre-compiled contract. That's always at a set address and we can access that and use it to get things like the transaction count or the current block number on the Arbitrum network. And then there's retrieval tickets. And I haven't actually used these myself, but my understanding is that they provide a communications method between layer one and layer two. This has been used by the core team in the bridge contract, for example, to get funds to and from the Arbitrum network. And I think it's gonna play a big role in the future in kind of cross-chain communications. Okay, now the fun bit. Let's try a layer two swap using Uniswap. If we go to app.uniswap.org. You can see we've already got the Arbitrum testnet live on Uniswap, which is absolutely great. We're gonna try swapping some for an MYT token. This is actually a token that I deployed myself to the Arbitrum network. And let's swap a small amount here. Confirm that transaction. And this is what I'm really excited about. You can see the gas price is really low. From the calculations that I've done, I think the gas prices on Arbitrum are gonna work out kind of for a Uniswap swap, it's gonna be like 0.2 to $2 maybe, US dollars. And that's a really big improvement on what the current prices are on the Ethereum mainnet. I'm hoping this is gonna open up a whole new kind of boom in the DeFi ecosystem. That's gone through now. We can add the MYT token to MetaMask. Let's close that up. Go into MetaMask and we've got some token, and we've got some ERC20 tokens and our remaining Ethereum. So to wrap this up, developing on Arbitrum isn't that different from developing on Ethereum. There's a few little nuances we need to be aware of. We need an extra NPM module and a different truffle configuration, but things should migrate fairly straightforwardly across from Ethereum to the Arbitrum and other optimistic roll-up networks. 
Currently, if you want to deploy contracts to the Arbitrum mainnet, you have to get address whitelisted by the development team. But that's being done in a fair launch way and anyone can get developer approval. Apparently, they've had 250 teams apply for developer access so far. There's not much information available about when the consumer launch of the Arbitrum network is going to take place, but it looks like we're gearing up towards that and it should be happening imminently. Optimism, another optimistic roll-up network which has lots of support from the big DeFi players, is due to launch this summer. And we have the ZK roll-ups, which is a slightly different technology, but a similar kind of thing from a consumer's perspective, due to launch later this year. It's a really exciting time for Ethereum because we're having all these different EVM compatible layer twos launching, and they're all going to be fairly straightforward to migrate contracts and existing DeFi infrastructure across. It's going to open up a lot of opportunities for investors and developers who want to build on these networks. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for updates. Thank you for watching.